What's up everybody, this is Butterfish Tank and today we will be talking about keeping corals successfully. Corals are, well, they are hard to keep because of the fact that they need very good water parameters. For example, um, like SPS corals for example, they need very low nitrates, very low phosphates and um, those levels should be kept very low because you know, SPS corals are just not a beginner coral, that is what I can say right away. But for example, soft corals like uh, the big gladelia over there, the mushrooms, um, the green star polyp down there, and, um, and stuff like that, Th those soft corals, those are really easy to care for because they, they do not require the same things as, for example, SPS corals do. Now, an average coral to keep would be LPS corals. They also do require some good water parameters and stuff like that. But, I mean, generally, they are pretty easy to keep. Many people overrate it, like saying, for example, Euphilia species, like the frog spawn that I got up there. Um, many say that they are very hard to keep, they're impossible to keep, and they re require good water parameters and stuff like that. And the common mistake that people make is that they don't research why their coral died. Now often a frog spawn coral often gets too much water movement. A frog spawn coral needs very low water movement. You can see at my frog spawn coral it, it slides the waves back and forth in the water and it should not get any more than that. You should not blast it away where it's swabbing everywhere because frog spawn corals are very vulnerable to things like um, water movement because they can actually rip apart their tentacles and they can damage the coral very very much and they might die because of that or well it will die because of that so what you often will see is that people get a frog spawn coral they get it into their tank, they, they place it at a place where they think it looks good they don't know how the water movement is around that area and then it closes down it doesn't retract, it, it, it retracts and it doesn't come out. It's just, it, just, it just sits there and does nothing. Now, this is the, the mistake that I made to start with, but I, I recognized after one day that I have to move it because if I didn't move it, it would probably just die. So I moved it up to a place where there's not a lot of water movement, but a lot of lighting. And it really benefits from all this lighting and it's scurrying amazing you can even see that there's so much light on this call that you almost even can't see it on this camera because it's so bright so lots of lighting for LPS calls I will recommend that although um, that is mostly for Euphilia species for example LPS calls like the Duncan call also needs um, low to medium lighting however um, you can actually keep it down at the bottom of your tank and keep it right there without almost no lighting and it will still grow. You don't even have to feed it either. But what I do recommend to you guys is feed your Duncan corals, man. It's so funny and they grow like crazy. I f feed my Duncan coral once every week um, with some mice shrimp and it really eats it and it loves it. Um, so you know that that is that is what I do. Some people say to me, "You don't even need to feed it." Well, I do because I want this coral to grow big and beautiful and have lots of coloration. So think about that. Anyways, um, let's talk about the Cladelia coral right here and how I keep it. It is in a spot where there's a lot of lighting, and that's why it's so big. I started with it um, when it was a little bit smaller, and in for about. Uh, a month to two months, it has already grown like crazy. I mean, it's just look at this. It's on the size of my hand. It's gigantic. I really love this coral. This is definitely my favorite coral. It's very easy to keep. It doesn't need a lot of feeding. For example, I do feed it some phytoplankton like once a month, but only once a month because 
Typically, they will catch food for themselves, and they will also get most of its nutrients from the lighting. So, it will also catch the food that the other corals are eating, and the other fish are eating as well. And, you know, that that, that is just the thing that you guys have to remember. Don't feed your Cladelia fingerlella as much, because it will catch food on its own, and it will get food without you feeding it. So. Um, let's talk about mushroom corals. Um, mushroom corals, well, I, I've had these guys for um, some weeks now, and they're doing amazing. Although, they got placed in a spot where there was too much water movement. And the result of that is that some of them has actually been floating around the tank and have sitting other spots in the tank. And that's basically what they do. If they don't like the spot that they're in, they'll basically take they won't sit and they won't sit in the rug that you placed them on before and they'll just float somewhere else and i got i lost two mushrooms um by they they basically came into the uh, sea bay and the sea bay has basically stinged them and um, a mellow sea bay has a very very strong sting so they both died however a lot of the mushroom coals that has been floating around has been sitting everywhere you can for example see over there there's a coral that sits over there there's also some longer back there and stuff like that but the rest of these mushroom corals are happy with this spot and they just sit there forever now let's talk about my favorite coral in this tank I mean this is just my one of my favorite corals overall I just don't know why I think it's an amazing coral this coral is the, um, the green star polyps green star polyps are very easy to keep actually they do not require those um, a lot of different water parameters and they do not require feeding however i do feed mine some phytoplankton and cyclobees a mix of those like other sps corals eat although this is a soft coral i feed it that about once a week and sometimes i don't even feed it for a week and it's kind of different um, i do feed it once a week right now but there was some weeks where i didn't feed it but you know, that is basically, yeah. So, um, yeah, guys, that is basically how you care for corals and keep them successfully, and a little bit on every single type of coral. Now, let me just talk to you guys about a thing that happened to this tank. Some of you guys might notice that the clownfish aren't in here anymore. And you guys, some of you guys know why the claggy clownfish and the bicol angelfish died. They died because of disease, or parasites to be more specific. It's not ick, but rather broccolinella or velvet. I do not know wh which of those two it is, because they look very similar. Um, however, I... Basically, let me just talk to you, about, to you guys about what happened. So, I had those bicolor, that, that, that bicolor angel fish and the claggy clone fish. And my fish, my fish doll said that I should wait about three weeks, and then I could those parasites will pro probably go away. And I did get some medication from a guy, even though it's illegal to get medication for your aquarium here in Denmark. Um, so it was hard to me to cure it, and it's just a pain in the ass. But you know, it, I did figure it out, um, and the the clunky clownfish almost survived, but it died. And three weeks after that, I thought, well, I'm ready to get new fish, so I put the the the, the clownfish in there, the Ocellaris clownfish. And after two weeks, they both died of the same disease. And it's it's horrible, and I do not know what to do. And I, I what I try to do is that I try to wait about uh, a month to two months to make sure that the parasite spores are all gone, because. I do know that there's nothing wrong with the water parameters because my corals are growing better than you even can think. My corals are doing amazing. I mean, fantastic. So it can't be the water parameters, and yeah, I just I just don't know what happens, and I don't know where it came from. Apparently, I think it's because our fish store don't have UV sterilizing in their tank. But I did find a new fish store that had that, and you know, that will easier kill those diseases that come from the fish so I will get fish soon guys I have soon waited for about three weeks and um, it's going to take some time but you know I'm patient um, like you should be in this hobby patience is key and uh, yeah so um, 
By the way guys, I got some Texas nails, you can see they're sitting over there. I think one of them died because he fell off and uh, I was, I think I was too late to whip him up again because they fall down and they can't whip themselves up um, again, it's, it's kind of weird. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and see you guys in another video.